Hey guys, I'm Mark Miller, and today we're breaking down aperture and depth of field. Controlling your depth of field can be tricky to understand when first starting out, so today I'm gonna break it down and make it really easy to remember. Then at the end, I'm gonna take you out in the field with me to see how it all works. So let's go. All right, so when it comes to depth of field, there are three components that have an impact and you can use all three of them together to influence how your image turns out. You have your aperture or f-stop, your distance from your subject, and your focal length. Your aperture is represented by an f-stop number. Each lens will vary with the available aperture range, but f2.8 to f22 is fairly common with some exceptions depending on your actual lens. The aperture or the f-stop is the main way to control your depth of field and this is usually where people get lost when it's explained to them. So to simplify things, we're going to think of it like this. The smaller the f-stop number, the smaller your depth of field, and the larger your f-stop number, the larger your depth of field. You can take a screenshot now if you want something to reference later on. Alright, so now I'm going to show you a couple examples of how your f-number controls your depth of field. So in this first shot, it was taken at 2.8 and you can see very little is in focus. I focused on the second shell and everything in front and behind it are out of focus. I have a very small depth of field and it's only about the width of the shell itself. In the second shot, I used f22 and I still focused on the same shell, but now all of the shells are in focus. My depth of field is much greater by using the larger f-stop number. Okay, so when it comes to distance and how that impacts your depth of field, it's pretty simple. The closer you are to your subject, the smaller your depth of field, and the further away you are, the larger your depth of field. I'm gonna show you some examples of that when we head out to shoot later in the video. The last piece is your focal length, and the longer your focal length, or the more you zoom your lens in, the smaller your depth of field, and the wider your focal length, the larger your depth of field. This area can be a little bit technical as to how it actually works, but just think of it like your distance. When you zoom in, you're essentially getting closer to your subject, so the depth of field gets smaller. Now, there is no right or wrong depth of field to use in photography, and that's because photography can be subjective. But here are a couple rules of thumb to think about when you're shooting. Typically, you wanna use a small depth of field when you're shooting portraits or when you're trying to single out an object in your image. In these two images, I want the viewer's attention to be on the seashell and the flower only. So I used a small depth of field to blur out everything else that might serve as a distraction to the viewer. However, when I'm shooting landscapes, I want a lot of depth of field in my images so I can capture all the details in my scene. To create a good landscape photo, you want to have something in focus in your foreground, the middle, and the background of your image to create some depth so the viewer can travel through the image when they're viewing it. In this shot of Cincinnati, I used a large depth of field so the rocks in the foreground, the bridge, and the buildings in the back are all in focus. And then in this shot of the lighthouse, I did the same thing to ensure my rocks and the pier and the lighthouse are all sharp and in focus. Okay, so now that we have the details covered, let's head out to shoot some quick examples. All right guys, so we're outside now and we're gonna do a quick demonstration on how depth of field works. I've got my daughters helping out once again. And the first thing I wanna mention is you always wanna set your subject up far enough away from the background so they don't uh, get too close. If they do, that's going to be a lot more distracting. This will be harder to get a blurry background. So the first thing we're going to do is take two shots at 50 millimeters right here. The first one's going to be at f2.8. And as you can see, we bring that picture up. Uh, she's nice, sharp, and in focus, and as we zoom in a little bit, that background is pretty soft and blurry. Um, but now, I'm going to go ahead and change my f-stop up to f11. And we're going to take another shot, 50 millimeters, f11, from the exact same spot and see how that compares. Okay. 
All right, so then we got the two pictures here side by side. As we zoom into the second one here, you can see the difference in the background. Um, it's still fairly soft, but it's more detailed, a little bit more distracting because we have a larger F number and that's making us have a larger depth of field. So for this next example, we're going to head and go back down to F2.8. And I'm gonna get closer to my subject and take a picture um, to see how the distance compares. Okay, so took that shot. Got a lot closer, 50 millimeters, f2.8. You can see how soft and blurry that background is. I'm gonna take one more from the original spot, 50 millimeters, f2.8. And as we zoom into this picture here, you can see that there's a lot more detail. We're at the exact same settings, but the first picture, because we we're closer to our subject, we shrunk down that depth of field, making the background even softer and blurrier than the second one. For our final example, we're gonna use focal length. So I'm gonna stay at F2.8, and I'm gonna zoom in from 50 millimeters to 75 and take a picture. All right, so we can bring that picture up now and simply by zooming in, we've got a nice soft background, same settings as the 50 millimeter F2.8 as we compare them. And just by zooming in, we get a little bit softer background. So those three components, you've got your F number, you've got your distance to your subject, and then you've got your focal length. And all three of those you can use in combination to get that soft blurry background that you're looking for. And uh, depending on what, what lens you have is gonna determine what F number you can get down to, but you can use those other two um, key factors there to get that soft blurry background when you're taking a picture. All right guys, so that's it. If you found this video to be helpful, please give it a like. And if you have any other questions, leave them in the comment section or just let me know what other topics you'd like to learn more about. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.